Hey guys, Happy New Year! Oh, I am so glad that 2020 is behind us. Today we're gonna go over frequently asked questions from you guys to help you crush your home goals this year. So I'm so excited to get into all these great questions because they're amazing. So grab your notebooks, let's start. Hi everyone, I'm Tara and I work very closely with Lisa. We're so excited to walk through these Q&A questions today. We have pulled these questions from you, from our hello at Lisa Holt email, our website, lisaholt.com, and of course, YouTube. So let's get started. From the Small Space Ideas video, Peggy Asprey asks, my husband is 6'4 and all torso monkey man and all the furniture out there is short and low slung how do we find tall person furniture what an interesting question and this is for everybody who's maybe over six feet tall you definitely want to think about things differently instead of modern and sleek and contemporary which tends to be designed lower and with shorter backs you want to think about things that are maybe transitional or even new versions of traditional pieces things like wing back chairs and adjustable back sofas ladder back chairs for dining those are great make sure your bed is in a platform which is too low to accommodate your legs you want to get a regular bed that has a double box spring etc so you can make sure that everything is in proportion for you and that'll cover you i'm going to link a couple of these pictures that we're showing down below so you've got some good resources but that should help okay next question carrie ballard asks what is the best lumen count for a home's overhead lighting? Our already warm toned everything home is also drowning in what feels like too yellow lighting. Oh gosh, that is such a great question. And I get that a lot because lighting is super tricky. Now, I did do a video all about lighting, which answers a bunch of questions around this, but it helps to go over this specifically again. So with LED lighting, you have to think about this. There are two important elements that you have to consider, which is the color, which is known as Kelvins, and the lumen level, which is known as amount of light output, okay? Now, really the only one that you have to worry about is Kelvins or color, because lumens you can change with a dimmer. With Kelvin, the key is that most ambient lighting you'll want to have between 2,900 to about 3,300. And you can see that there's a huge difference. There's, there's everything from 2,500 all the way up to, you know, 10,000. And the range of color is huge, right? But where we wanna kind of live our daily lives and where our colors look most balanced sits around 3,000 to 3,200 Kelvin. So what you wanna do is make sure that all of your ambient lighting, maybe your ceiling lights, et cetera, sit in that color range on the bulb itself and then everything will tend to kind of balance out a little bit and make a little bit more sense and you can get a reading on your color next question from your must-have home decor video Jacqueline Zibkowski asks what is the deal with faux plants are they in or out thought that even though they might look realistic they're still a no-no Oh, Jacqueline, that's a great question. And you know, the biophilic movement, which means bringing plants indoors, is super, super on trend right now. I love them and I use them frequently, especially now because the technology's gotten so much better. They look so much more real and they're much more convincing and they're way low maintenance, right? That's a big difference. So the deal is this. Live plants are always the best choice if you think they will thrive in the space that they are in because they bring in an energy that faux plants don't have. But if you're dealing with a rental property or a space that you can't reach or something that doesn't get a lot of light in an area and a plant would be a good solution, absolutely look at faux plants. I mean, I love this olive tree. There's some great ones out there. I expect them a lot. So I'll link some of these really good ones down below. All right, next up from your million dollar look video, Cynthia Brooks asks, great ideas, but I'm very petite. At 4'11", most furniture swallows me up and I look like Edith Ann in her rocking chair. Do you have any ideas for furniture choices for people on the smaller side? 
Oh my gosh, so that is the exact opposite of our first question today. But I've got a great answer for you, but it's totally different. For those of us that are petite sized, we're actually really in luck because vendors have recently realized the value of creating collections that are smaller in scale. So they'll be named things like apartment sized, uh, small space specific. There, there's a number of vendors out there that have complete collections that are more petitely scaled. They're tighter in depth, they're lower in arm and seat height and back height, so we just kind of fit more comfortably into them. So don't worry, you're covered. There's a lot of great options out there. I'm linking some of them down below, but you're good. So now guys, if you're liking these tips, be sure and smash that subscribe button. It's the new year. You want to start it off right. And be sure and hit like and subscribe and all those other things. All right, next one from your new IKEA 2021 video. Sue Curtis asks, I've made the faux pas of putting my TV over my fireplace. I know, yikes, but I can't change it now. Do you have any tips for stopping it from dominating the living room? Oh, those TVs! Okay, here's the deal. If you're locked into having this big black blob on your wall or over your fireplace, the best way to mitigate for that, if you absolutely cannot move it, is to make the wall surface behind it dark. Here's a perfect example. I love this image where the fireplace is actually done in gray shiplap and the TV is really not easy to spot on that wall. And then the rest of the wall is all well lit and draws your attention. It stops competing for being the focal point and that's what we want to do. Another great example is this accent wall that's done in a smoky charcoal and the TV just kind of disappears on it. That's a great look. So you can see that there's an easy solution for this. You just have to figure out where your dark paint will stop and start that makes sense for your space and then you're covered. Lisa LaBelt asks, can you please go over how to mix metals? I love brass and have a lot of it, but when does it become overkill? Lisa, mixing metals, that's such a great question because everybody wants to know about it. So here we go, guys. There's two rules of thumb. It's really simple. One, don't mix more than two metals at a time in a space. That's all you need. And then think of it in a two thirds, one third, or a main metal statement and the accent metal statement. So for instance, like in the kitchen here, your main metal statement is the brass because they've got a lot of this brass hardware on all of the cabinetry. And then the accent is actually the stainless on the sink and the appliance. So there's that two thirds, one thirds coming in. Or here's another example of the opposite, right? They've got all these beautiful appliances and that gorgeous, yummy hood done in that stainless. So that's the main metal statement. And then the accent is the brass on the hardware. So it works either way. Just remember those two principles and you're good to go. Okay, next question. Interior Design Online Shops video, Claudia DeRuder asks, I have quite a bit of antique Chinese furniture and decorative accessories that I love. I'm concerned my home may start to look like it belongs to a grandmother, which I am, and I don't want that. Can you share some ideas on how I can update it but keep a lot of the Chinese accessories? Oh, Claudia. So this is a bit of a long answer, but I don't want my editor to be fast forwarding me like he did in my Christmas video. So I'm going to give you a short and sweet one, which is this is the epitome of the transitional style statement, which is the idea of mixing old with new to update it so it doesn't look like grandma. So if you saw my video on French girl style, I talked at length about mixing periods together. But here's where you want to think about it. You've got these beautiful Chinese pieces. You're going to need to edit them down most likely to the few favorites that you really love. And then you, what you're going to want to do is combine them with sleek, contemporary, modern furnishings in completely neutral colors. So that what happens is all of your upholstered items and the other elements around these incredible antiques are quiet, simple, and 
act as a backdrop so that these antiques are super focal points. You can see there's some beautiful ways to do this. Here's a beautiful one with a break front with Queen Anne legs. And another way to handle that is a collection of accessories all together because that makes all of those little accessories like these beautiful blue and white Ming vases all smooshed together makes that a huge focal point. So you can play with it that way. But this is honestly the epitome of transitional style and you are gonna wanna stay tuned because that is coming up next. Okay, next, Trish Blazy asks, what are your thoughts on luxury vinyl flooring? Can you do a YouTube video on this product? Oh my gosh, for sure, I am doing a video on flooring and luxury tile will be covered in that along with a lot of other materials. But also make sure that you are signed up for the club at www.lisaholt.com because in the club we're gonna be doing lots of deep dives into product resource knowledge so that you always know exactly what to pick for your situation. But to address luxury vinyl products, I think they're fantastic in the right places. What's great about it is that the product now comes in this huge range of looks. I mean, it's everything from, you know, terrazzo tile to stone to lots of wood planking and things that look great. I mean, if you haven't seen luxury vinyl tile lately, take a look at the floor of this restaurant. I mean, it's done in this gorgeous chevron. That's amazing, right? The deal with the luxury vinyl flooring though is it's great in certain places. Think secondary bathrooms, rental properties, garages, playrooms, basements, laundry, those kinds of spaces. That's where it's perfect. You don't really wanna do your entire floor of your house in it because the footfall experience of vinyl flooring is different and not as nice as any of the other flooring material options like wood or stone tile or ceramic tile, those kinds of things. So if you have the budget and you can squeeze out at least your public areas in a hard surface, that's preferable. But go to town on these products for all these other spaces because they're looking great these days and they're a good budget option. So guys, I know I ask you every video about commenting, but in all honesty, this is how I got all these great comments and questions that I can answer for you. So keep that up. I really love that. It makes a difference. And oh my gosh, Happy New Year to everybody. It's gonna be a great new year. We are gonna crush our home goals and so much more. Be sure and watch these videos. I'll see you next week.